dead at age 74. From the 1930s to the 1950s, he was America's most influential journalist. Journalist? He was a hack, a cheap gossip monger. Well, he used words like bullets. He could kill you with a comma. Yes, I loved him. And I think he loved me too, once. Called the father of today's fast-paced, people-oriented reporting. Newspapers, radio, TV, he did it all. Turn on your local news, scan the magazine you read for fun. You'll find his legacy. Walter Winchell, dead at 74. He was a genius. In his way, he was a genius. Red-baiting son of a bitch, I hope he rots in hell. Winchell, knowing your son's name sits on every breakfast table from the Bronx to the Bowery. Proud, of course. But Walter's always been a good boy, as his father would tell you himself if he weren't away on business. The father's away on business over on the stoop, where his customers pay him with trumps to buy his coins. Drink your egg cream, Walter. Who told you Walter had almost been killed by the runaway horse cart? <laughs> the cart was moving like a snail, <laughs> and the animal was more mule than horse. <laughs> The boy sleeps under a different blanket every night and in beds more non-blood than blood. The father, he had a cloth shop, silks and such, but he lost it betting his buttons after he pawned his shirt. And the mother, she takes herself across the river every day to polish bread. And crowned thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And if I may, I'd like to ask you to remember that whether your boy is on with a bayonet, killing the hun, or Wait, your you daughter's... Get off stage. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Schwing Sisters. What the hell was that last bit? Something they could chew on at all. They'll work it out in their sleep. What the hell is this? Oh, well, that's a good question. And an even better time to answer it. It's a kind of backstage news report on the goings-on of our little troop here. What is this about me having an affair on my wife? You didn't have the affair on your wife. It was on somebody else's wife. Whose wife, you ask? By no sense. It costs only a nickel dropped in the honor box to keep me in print and pulp. I'll kill him! Hey! Hey! Hold it! You're fired, Winchell. You take it easy. On the second, five senators, two congressmen, and some actor. Who's the actor? That actor, you know, he was in that flick with the horse and the girl. Skip it. What's a minefield like? On like Christmas Day in the Argonne, everyone too drunk to count the cannons. There's guns in every floor, they're all carrying. Something sweet must be happening because they got extra watchdogs on the second. Huh. I have a light bulb as to what it might be. You never reach the second. Your soul book says I do. <laughs> Champagne? No, thanks, doll. How are you? Good, Glad how are you, Walter?
Mr. Bellamy. Hey, aren't you Robert Bellamy? Excuse me, aren't you Robert Bellamy, the producer? Yeah, but I'm not casting for anything right now, so... No, 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 I'm not looking for a role. But a role may come looking for you tomorrow in Winchell's column. You and your two lovely ladies. How are you, ladies? Winchell? Say, who are you? Wayne. I don't think I know you, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> just, just Wayne. Just Wayne. Just Wayne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I've been instructed by a certain interested party to keep yours and another gentleman's name out of Winchell's column, which goes to press. In a couple hours. Yeah. <laughs> I know better than anyone on Broadway how that buzzard works. <laughs> He's here. He's here right now? Yeah. I better go. No, 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 no. Not before I reach the second gentleman on the second floor. I've been instructed to keep both names out, not just me. I can't get you up there. Oh, come on. I can't. I can't. You gotta try. I'm sure your wife, Lily, would appreciate it. I'll be back in a minute, ladies. <laughs> this gentleman's fine now. That's a dynamite column. Two senators and five congressmen. Five congressmen and two senators. All General, drinking from can... the same bathtub where a Corrine was swimming. It's immoral, indecent, and unhygienic. I didn't hear the health commissioner complain that there was a hair in his glass. It's not news. It's not proper dispatch. Oh, yeah, like your other front page banners. Vixen's voice from the grave names her rapist. I was a Hoboken harlot. They're good pieces. They're good peasants. They're not rich. They're not respectable. These people's misery won't muddy up your press luncheon. At least those items were written in complete sentences, not these slapdash half-baked phrases running together with dots and dashes everywhere, adjectives without nouns, adverbs with no verbs. Gavro, I'm not writing for the Ivy League. I'm writing for the Major League, for the people who wake up every morning thinking that they're nothing because the jumbos are everything. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to level the playing field. You're That's writing all. writing for your wallet. What's wrong with coining for coin? You peddle death on the front page, and yet you bury the poor living under some Tom Thumb byline. No, Winchell, I'm just burying you and this fabrication. This story never happened. Says who, you? No, Winchell. Says your own story. Gentlemen. It seems, Mr. Winchell, you're under the uh, misapprehension that these gentlemen and I were at a gathering where not only was alcohol being served, but this young lady was present. Is that correct? Yeah, except I'd say that the alcohol was present and the young lady was served. I'd like to say right now we're at a meeting with the mayor from 6 until 10, and this actress was being auditioned by Mr. Bellamy at his office. In my office with my secretary in attendance. Isn't that correct, young lady? Uh, that's correct. It's a good part. I'm even getting a call back. Even if what you think you saw was true, I guarantee the time our names would spend in your column would be far shorter than the time this actress would spend in jail. Let me guess. The lewd behavior and corrupting the values of a democracy, right? Something along those lines. <laughs> well, we don't want that, do we? 
I'll tell the story. Oh, and no more passing yourself off as an interested party, Mr. Wayne. Wayne? Hang on, that's my name. Yeah, just a little inside joke to myself, though. Why don't you forget about that call back and come have supper with me? Okay. You got yourself a date. <laughs> Wayne. So how'd you know my last name anyway? This is my business to know people's names. Oh. What they use them for and what they don't use them for. Well, yeah. my first name's Dallas. No, it's not. Oh, yes, it is. No, 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 it's not. And you should lose that phony accent. My equity card says Dallas Wayne. Besides, I'm from the Lone Star State. I'm entitled to change my name. No one's entitled to change their name. A name is a sacred thing. It's the one thing that defines who you are and what you are. Broadway is rotten with burn bombs who baptize themselves Bellamy's, Steinbergs who title themselves Steels. What, so you've always been Winchell? Yeah. And anyone who tries to touch my name will lose theirs. Well, I won't touch your name. Taking me to the ha ha of the Park Avenue. This is the stork you're famed for. Famed? I'm an actress. I swoon. <laughs> Storm you. That tip on Gobble's typhoid turned out to be tonsillitis. Sorry about that, Mr. Winchell. I must have heard it wrong. We both start with the same letter. Well, next time, make sure it also ends with the same letter, or you'll be catching something yourself. Thank you, Mr. Winchell. Hi, doll. Hey, that's, uh... Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's... Yes, it is, yes, it is. It was impolite to point. And even more impolite to point out to them that I'm here. Well, let's okay. grab the table. Yeah, we will, we will. But this is only the mouth of the lion's den. We're going into the cub. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Winchell, good to see you. It's good to be seen. Table 50 as usual, sir? That would be wonderful. Hello, Walter. Hi, darling. So, how is your lovely wife, Miriam? Very well. Mm-hmm. As I was just saying to Mr. Juro Master, who was here without his. Well, it's always nice to talk to a family man. <laughs> Would you bring us a pot of coffee, please, with coffee? Certainly, Thank you. Coffee? Swell. Booze everywhere, and I'm out on the town with blue light bulb. Just keep your eyes and ears open, Bill. Do I got a choice? Your accent's slipping. Want to dance? Well, sure. Might as well. You should hear me sing. <laughs> <laughs> You're not too bad yourself, though. Well, thank you. Oh, sure. Hey, I thought I was leaving with you. You are. Mm -hmm. Just keep your eyes and ears open, okay? I'll do that. Okay. You understand? Mm-hmm. How many to the table? All right, easy. Right, right now, after all this is said and done, I hear Ooh, Lily and Lorraine say she's going. Fanny Bryant. She's playing the horses. Right out there. In the broad daylight. It's just nice to see you, Walters. Glad to see you. Oh, oh, oh. Sounds like, um. Sounds like what? Oh, oh. Sounds like. I don't know. I, 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 I was dancing with that no neck you yeah. threw me to, and, and and the band was loud, and and he was talking about a guy, um, out of town talent. What kind of talent? Uh, a singer? Or, or I don't what? know. He was coming in to meet with uh, 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 Schultz. Dutch Schultz. I didn't ask if he was from Holland. Ooh, my head hurts. All right, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Why is your column cut in half today? Well, 
Well, then maybe you should try writing something nice about somebody nice. Mm -hmm. I know there must be nice people where you go, and I think you should find them. And Walter, don't quote the children anymore. I know you know what I said about that. Printing what Walda said last month about the two dogs next door dancing together. And now Walter Jr. in his first try saying Ash can. All right, Junebug. I've got to go. All right. Bye bye. morning. Oh, what time we have to check out? We don't. I live here. The San Moritz? Mm -hmm. Some landlord. <laughs> Last night was a goodie. What's the dough for? What do you mean? What's the dough for? Oh, no, 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 baby doll. For the item. For the Vincent Cole plum. <laughs> no, I always pay my stringers when they bring me a ripe fruit. Okay. Rubber knees was just, you know, a gee wizard that I didn't expect. I'm gonna meet and greet you around town, okay? So I want you to forget about Bellamy and that bunch, the old playboys. Playboys? Mm -hmm. You like getting words wrong, don't you? No, no, I get them right. The rest of the world is choking on the dictionary. Yeah. If I want to bring you another item, where are you going to be? Everywhere. I'll be everywhere, Squell Joe. And Diddy Vince Coles rolled into town for a chit with the boy from Holland. Jerome asked his wife, Could you please stop that tapping? I've asked you before. Has been packing his lunch without the apples, so who's his Eve? Garbo's gone back to silent flick, so says her nose and throat. Pistachio, anyway. What the hell is this, Tripe? That's my column. Not an indecent, immoral, or unhygienic phrase to be found. We've got to press in half an hour, so it's your decision, Solomon. Whatever you want to do. I can't print this. I can't even understand it. Well, that's your brain pain. My brain pain? You know, I'm not a fool. I know what making whoopee is. Congratulations. I bet your wife's relieved. We printed that about one of the Reinhardt brothers. You printed it. I only wrote it. They're not renovating any of their houses. I checked. What was that we printed yesterday? Does renovation mean divorce? Winchell, I'm talking to you. Walter, you've become the most popular newspaper columnist in the country. I don't understand your concern. You're going to be wonderful on the radio. I'm a newsman. I, I don't want to do radio, frankly. No offense. I but I don't think I have a voice for radio. Well, Mr. George Hill of the American Tobacco Company disagrees, and he's prepared to offer you this as his argument. Well, he's got away with words. <laughs> yeah. That's your first week's salary. I spent more money than I made my whole time in Vaudeville. Ah. <laughs> well, you don't need to worry about theatrics on the Lucky Strike Hour. This is a class act featuring bands from around the country with you in the middle doing 12 minutes of your, uh, your news. You see, our listeners are of the lower strata of society, and we want to do a high society show. Now, your broadcast will not address itself directly to the working classes, but on the surface, it will be a news report for the gorgeous and the glamorous. See, this way we have a subdued and rarefied program where these people feel they get to peer into the good life. Where they can, um... Press their noses against the restaurant window and look at what they're never going to eat? Exactly. Now, isn't that what gossip's all about? Am I right? <laughs> well, we've written this introduction for your show, and, uh... I'm sure you'll find it to your satisfaction. Sir? Oh, thank you, sir. Bonsoir. Did you write this? I believe Mr. Hill did. Bonsoir to all the beautiful people up and down Broadway in the hallowed hills of Hollywood. This is your society scoopster, 
Walter Winchell with the latest for the greatest. Get it. Why are you drinking so much water? Because I don't want to read my copy as fast as I'm going to piss after the last page. Get the hell out of here. Wonderful. Uh, Mr. Hill's outside with the other sponsors. Boy, you look top strata. I'm glad we ordered the pinstripe. People won't see what I'm wearing over the radio. Oh, no, but they'll be able to hear it, Walter. They'll be able to hear it. You're right. After gender, Mr. Hill and the others, I'll, uh, I'll see you after the show. And yes, again, that was Glenn Miller and his orchestra with Stardust. Coming to us from high atop the Rainbow Room at Rockefeller Center, where you always sit head and shoulders above the crowd. We have a treat tonight for those of you in the know and in the glow. We bring you for the first evening and for many Sunday evenings to come, that gather of gossip about the rich and irresistible for the irresistibly rich. That wordsmith who will whisper all the wonders of the world. To all you worldly wonderfuls, Walter Wedgel. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. Dots and dashes and lots of flashes from border to border and coast to coast. New York City. William Powell, recently released from the vows by Carol Lombard, is already swapping baby talk with Anne Harding. Randolph Scott's current armful is the recently renovated Esther Ralston. The Don Verdugos anticipate a blessed event in latter October. And now the only dot, dot, dot is whether the baby Joy will wear blue or mink. Boots Mallory and Cy Bartlett mutually broke off matters, but she denies Ben Alvarado was the heart thumper. Madeline Fairbanks of the Fairbanks Twins and Lawrence Sherman, president of the Allen Company, were recently merged. My stock predictions, by now, sell quick. Ellie Gilbert of the Village Barnyard Choir and Richard Devine have recently angled up to the altar. He is wishing you a happy Father's Day with a toast to every mother's first child, her husband. Did you ever notice the little brass tablet on the door in the room of your hotel which reads, Stop, have you left anything? Apropos of the high cost of living, it should read, Stop, have you anything left? And one final note, before you're ever vigilant, reporter for Lucky Strike signs off until next Sunday at 9. Always remember, it is you, the American public, who are the beautiful people. Because the man who wears his child on his shoulders and his wife on his hand heads the best-dressed family in town. Good night. Got a piss. <laughs> you should happen to plug her act in your column. Mr. Frank Costello would uh, show his undying gratitude. I understand. I understand. Thanks, Walter. Say hi to Frank for me. He's a good aide and a good kid down at City Hall for two years. I don't want to lose him, but he got in a scuffle with... No. Anyway, I want to keep him. Okay. All right. Send the kid here tomorrow now. Thank you, Walter. Thank you very much. It's my theme. I call it Judy's theme. And this guy who calls himself a band leader, right. I mean, he just stole it. I saw your show Friday night. I didn't like it. But I have a friend of mine who needs a job. Uh, anything, Walter, whatever you need. Put her in it, and I might like it. No problem. Thanks. Hello, Walter Winchell's room. It's for you, some dame named June. Hello. Hi, June. How are you? Good. Good morning. Yeah. No, wait, June. Let me say something, honey. Let me just say one. and there's nothing so bare as a dame in June. And if June is your month of months, have the wind to keep your husband warm. 
will disappear into December like a good, brittle girl. Got it? Grand. On with the news. You're late. Where's my supper? I don't have your supper. I was, um, excuse me. Um, I'm, I'm Herman Klerfeld, the writer from the Bronx. I'm here about the copy post. Ow. Oh. I thought you were my dinner. No. Boys, this is Herman uh, Klerfeld from the Bronx, the writer. This Hi. is Sam Haig, the press agent. Melvin Diamond, the press agent. So you, uh, you're here for the copy post, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I want to be a press agent. Why? <laughs> what kind of experience you got? None, but I got some pretty good items to pitch. Really? Yeah. You ever sold anything to the newspapers in the last month or the last year? Well, actually, I... I... Here's your sandwich, Mr. Rush. Where'd you go, to Chicago to get it? Actually, I just got out of college. Uh, accounting. Accounting? Yeah. Really? My brother is an accountant in Brooklyn. He only calls me when he needs tickets to Broadway shows that I pan. But you pan every show. Yeah. That's why he should stay in Brooklyn. And you should stay in the Bronx. I got no time to break in, Hemingway. Not this time, Winchell. I know what his girl Friday means. It's his secretary, isn't it? Gavro, you're the razor's edge. Now, if you could only put your wit to your wrists. Mr. William Randolph Hearst owns this paper, and he's not going to stand for you writing about one of his close friends and his close friend's secretary in such a manner. Yes, he will. Because Mr. William Randolph Hearst wants to sell papers, and I'm the man who sells them for him, but you, Gavro, you're just a red pencil Ronnie. You wouldn't know a story if it bit you on your Yale tale. You're nothing but a hack, Winchell. <laughs> you bastardize English syntax, and you pass it off as language. You, you butcher English grammar, and you wink at your common audience like you're Shakespeare. Well, Shakespeare would spit on you. Shakespeare would shake his hand. Who the hell is this? I'm Herman Clairfeld. Yes. The writer? You know, according to H.L. Mencken, the greatest linguist of our time, Mr. Winchell is Elizabethan in his creation and revitalization of the English language. And you say Mr. Winchell bastardizes English? Mm. Well, English is a bastard with too many illegitimate parents. From the Romans, to the Celts, to the Anglos, to the Saxons, to the Normans, to the Puritans. To the Irish, to the Slavs, French, Jews, all the way to Walter Winchell. English is the biggest, ugliest bastard you'll ever meet. But then again, I don't know the company you keep. <laughs> Winchell, get your press agents out of here. They work for you and not the mirror. Get them out before I call security and have them thrown out. All right, boys, did you hear that? You better get out of here. Okay, Clarefield, the writer. What do you got? Winston Nash. Um, you know, the, the Broadway producer? I know he doesn't sell shoes. Right. <laughs> right. Um, Mr. Nash is going to be discharged from Bellevue Park. Are you sure this is 30 years? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Seems extreme. He had a fist fight with his wife. Mm hmm And he's going to be uh, let out of the hospital. No, that item's a dodge. Nash's wife is 90 pounds to his 290. He fell down the stairs drunk, and he'd rather leak it out that she's Jack Dempsey than he's Jack Daniels next. OK. Um, oh, uh, Serge Mitovani, um, who's about to be divorced from I Mary. hate this, and I'm coming in. Uh, OK. Uh, he's been seen around town with none other than Doris Duke. No, that item's a dodge, too. It's a ghost. Mitovani's spreading that around just to get himself planted in the papers. NBC Studios. Uh, hey, I'm hey. Mr. Winchell, now I have other items. I have better items than that. See that dame down there by the light? Yeah, I see her. Yeah. You see her? You got a 10 on you? Sorry? A 10 spot, a sawbuck, a Hamilton. I, I 10 understand. American dollars. I understand. Um, I got two fives. Oh, fine, that'll be fine. Fairfield says his two fins say that dame's a looker. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's see. <laughs> An item's like a woman. Good from far, far from good. Two lessons. First, you gotta get up close to a story. You gotta look into its eyes and read its lips. Or you lose your bet every time. I wasn't aware I was making a bet. And that's the second lesson. Listen, listen, Mr. Winchell. I'll tell you what, writer. If I use one of your items in my broadcast tonight, you're hired. Otherwise... It was nice playing the ponies with you.
He's not going to use any of my items. Nah, don't worry about it. <laughs> Look, if he does, he'll do it in the first 10 minutes. But uh, his final thought, what he calls his last deed, mm -hmm. he always writes himself. Yeah? Yeah. And now, okay. with all the dirt for you skirts and shirts, here's Walter Winchell. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. The King Vito and Marion Hopkins romance looks strong in Hollywood court. But if anyone's looking for Vito's crown, his court jester's wearing it. And that's all he's wearing. Long live the fling. <whistles> New York. Dorothy Parker, Poison Ivy herself to many people, is full of it, which explains her bandaged paws. District Attorney Dewey mentioned his gubernatorial timber by the sawmill Republicans will not run for that office if Governor Lehman does. And now for a review of the latest musical from the Schubert Brothers, who, contrary to popular belief, I've never thought were lousy. Why, they're the best mediocre producers in town. Their latest triumph, Wunderbar, gives boredom a bad name. But then again, I had a poor view of this show. The curtain was up. And now I know why the Schubert's are rich. They get dollars for a penny of talent. Now, I know there's been some talk of the Schubert's barring me from their shows, and if they do that, that's fine by your faithful reporter. I'll just wait five days and go to their closings. And now, before your faithful reporter signs off this week for Lucky Strike, here's a cherry to top off your Sunday night. When one of those college professors walks up to you and says Winchell's taking the ax to syntax and the hammer to grammar, that he's turning the English language from a mastiff into a mutt, you tell him English is the biggest hound in the pound. From the Romans to the Celts, to the Anglos, to the Saxons, to the Irish, to the Slavs, French, and Jews, all the way to yours truly. This dog knows when there's something new to bark. English always finds a new way to bark it. That's what makes America great. Good night. And now, back to the big band sounds of... Winchell, you will not regret this. I guarantee it. You will not regret it, Mr. Winchell. <laughs> I've been doing this show now for a number of years, and it's been wonderful, but I'm earning you a lot of money, and I want some of it back. I am not getting the salary of a man who has the top radio show in the country. The show has made you a star, Walter. No, no. This show has not made me a star. I made me a star. And I made more people smoke your cigarettes. Do you understand me? So what are we going to do, huh? Jurgens has offered me twice the money in a higher spot on the dial. And if you can match it, I'll stay. Well, Mr. George Hill okay. wants to know if they can match what we've got. Really? What's that? You. For another year. Oh, come on. You can't hold me to that Manhattan for a box of beads deal. It'll never hold up. Oh, yes, this will hold up, Walter. This is a contract. Right. It's not one of your father's pinochle markers. Mr. Winchell. Yeah. Harry. The son needs to talk to you. Please come with me. I'm down 40. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, fellas. I'll see you later. You tell that son of a bitch, George Hill, that my column will be the mirror that he sees his tobacco profits plummet in every morning. Shh, quiet, please. Do you understand what I'm saying? You tell him that cigarettes have suddenly become unhealthy for my airtime. Tell him that. All right? Come here. Hold on. Come here. Come here. You look great. You look great. Oh, Fit thank you. Like you. A glove, all thank right? you. Thank you. Hold on a second. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank I'll see you, you later. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Now, listen. I'm going to tell you calmly how they're going to continue the broadcast, OK? I found my own replacement. Hello. I'm Ed Sullivan, your new host for the Lucky Strike Hour. Mr. Winchell, how does it feel knowing the president-elect's in Miami as well, but you're getting more attention and bigger crowds? And more reporters following me. Ask yourselves that question. <laughs> Do you feel like a king? <laughs> no, I'm just a conceited peasant. You know that. All this attention will die off. But you have received threats from people on whom you've tattled. I don't tattle, prattle, or shake my rattle as some of you, and I know who, have portrayed me. But you have received threats. <laughs> The man who is hated by everyone knows who his friends are. And the man who is loved by everyone 
has more enemies than most. Someone tried to kill Roosevelt! Someone just tried to kill Roosevelt at Bayfront Park! Someone just tried to kill Roosevelt! Just now! Someone just tried to kill Roosevelt! Just now! Why don't you hold on? Where is the president? You don't have a help! Yeah, hello? You're talking to the suspect. And you got the assassin! Suspect! Daddy, let me in. I'm all the way. I don't care if you're the last of this year. Come on. Come on. Nobody does anything without the okay of Mr. Newman. Barnes Newman? Aye, he's in charge. Now, come on, lads. You gotta give me a freak. Operator, I want to make a toll call to the Bronx. Hello. A toll call from Miami. From Winchell? Yes, we accept the toll. Mr. Winchell? Clerk, I'll get you can down to my office for scratching the column. But it's set. You said so this morning, sir. Someone tried to off FDR. Be in my office in a half an hour to accept my call, or this is the last time we talk. Okay. What's the meaning of this? Hey, Mr. Newman, Walter Winchell, you back and call. Winchell, what the blazes do you want? Get off my runner. Well, I I'd like inside the lockup, please. I, I want first crack at the shooter. Are you mad? Go for some officers. Look, I'd rather talk to the shooter than your daughter in the sanitarium for that secret rescue. <laughs> Wait. I mean, uh, uh, think about the difficulty I'll have getting past the nurses and knocking under the bottles underneath the bed. Winchell, you're the devil's own Tony. I know. I'll give him your regards the next time I see him. All right. You talk to the shooter. I'll let him in, sir. Take him ride in the outside and step on it. I heard you were here, and I'd be curious to know what you think that. Daily Mirror, Emil Gavreau. Gavreau, Gavreau, hand the phone to Clerfeld, please. You're calling toll for a press agent who isn't supposed to be here in the office? I got an exclusive on FDR's would-be assassin. Would-be what? Assassin. This is a story for the city desk, not, not your gossip column. Hand the fucking phone to Clerfeld, will you? I'll tell her she melted the biggest scoop of the decade. Do it now. Mr. Winchell? All right, Clerfeld, the writer, I'm going to give you the straw and you spin it into gold. This is your chance to take your novel and cram it into 900 words and it better soar, it better fly, it better make my mama cry, all right? You got a pencil? Here we go. Joe Zung... Joe Zungara. Z-A-N-G-A-R-A. A, -A, -A. a blurry-eyed Florida transient. Fired five shots today at Franklin Delano Roosevelt in Miami's Bayfront Park. The first shot hit the mayor. The other four... Barely escaped the president-elect and found their unhappy marks on four innocent bystanders who, in this reporter's opinion, deserve bronze stars for taking bullets meant for our soon-to-be commander-in-chief. <laughs> That's marvelous. There is not a speck of purple in this prose. Walter, you've developed a wonderful style. Thank you very much, Mr. Hurst. And your exclusive interview with that assassin sold more papers in the morning than the, than the entire month. <laughs> but the question I would have asked is why he didn't aim a little sharper and plug that liberal SOB. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... Hope you don't mind eating off of paper plates. No, 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 it's fine. As long as I'm not the one who has to get them clean. Walter, I'm moving your column up to the top of the paper. The front page? Front page? No, no, the second page. After all, front page is for real news, am I correct? Of course, you're absolutely right. Yeah, but you'll be the top entertainment column we have, and I'm interested... I'm excited to see what stories you're gonna fill it with to keep it there. Okay. <laughs> Would you pass the ketchup, please? Thank you. Thanks. This is the Bruce Fruit you're hawking? Taylor Coldwell's luncheon. Carl Sandburg's haircut. Huh? Come on! You expect me to follow a president's hide with a poet's head? Sidewalk slow. There's no real stories. There are always real stories. Sometimes there are just no real men. Hello? Hold on a second, please. 
Hold off for you, Mr. Winshaw. Yeah? It's Dallas. Oh, hey, Maldon. How's no neck? You know you're supposed to call him Anthony now that he's letting me run his club. <laughs> anyway, I've been fishing around like you asked. I don't have much, but... Here goes. All right, so go ahead. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> That's a goodie. I like it. All right, yeah. You've disappointed Daddy. Now go. Not you, Herman. Stay. Al Capone? He's being transferred from Alcatraz to Georgia because he's dying of paresis, and then Atlanta Hospital's got better facilities. And that's it. That's the whole broadcast. Oh, about 10 seconds, huh? Mm. That's the whole show. How? I don't know. You tell me. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America, and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. Needles, California. Moving across the desert tonight at high speed in a darkened Pullman car is a man under heavy guard. Many of you will recognize his name. Most of you would shudder at its sound. He is Al Capone, chief gangster of them all. And he is being transferred under heavy guard to a certain city on the eastern seaboard. Maybe to your city, maybe to your neighborhood, where your wife walks. Is this true? Your children Absolutely. Play. Evo Harris next blast with a pair of uh, walls. All right, houses. let's move. I want to move? Come on, where are we going to move to? Walter, I've got an item for you. Senator Taft is a horse's aft. <laughs> <laughs> sit, down. sit down, my boy. Sit Thank down. you. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> I heard that uh, Capone story of yours last Sunday. Scared the heck out of Eleanor. Took all night to convince her that Al's new address wasn't Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> no, no, don't be silly. Enjoyed the drama. That's a reporter's job, isn't it? Well, Mr. President, I've been called a lot of things, but a reporter's not one of them. <laughs> yes. They say you dish the dirt, gab the gossip. You know, before you came here today, I looked up that word gossip. Oh, I imagine you know what it actually means, but I didn't. It comes from an old word, God sib, the sibling of a god, the kinsman to a divine thing. Walter? I think democracy is a divine thing. Yes, sir. The world's becoming a dangerous place, I'm afraid. A ticking bomb whose fuse has been long lit, and where it'll explode, I don't know. But you're the one reporter I've read who answers to no one. America needs a son like you on its side, who answers to no one. The face of fear is coming. I don't yet know its eyes, and I don't yet know its name. But you'll look for it, Walter, won't you? And when you see that face, when you find it, you will answer to no one, not even me. You'll dish the dirt and gab the gossip You'll be a sibling to a god. Yes, Mr. President. <laughs> yes, sir. Hitler's a thug. I grew up on the streets. I know a gangster when I see one. I'm gonna write a column about him. Oh, I'd love to read it. So would I. What are you waiting for? Get cracking. Walter, I... I... The European nations had better get down to brass tacks before they end up in iron chains. These soon-to-be captive countries must agree Hitler is their common enemy before they all face general attack. To treat this madman as a political figure is like the Portuguese thinking Napoleon was political because they were too busy looking at Josephine's figure. You're right, it's a little outside his realm. Yesterday he wrote that FDR's smile deserved a Nobel Prize. Yes, well... Perhaps that second page slot is going to his head. Perhaps, sir. I was more concerned about your business interests in Germany. The press services, the factories, the fiber mills and such. What do you want? 
not what I want. That's what Mr. Hurst wants. Daddy. <laughs> I didn't know you were in the building. Oh, good. How are you? I'm fine, finishing up my column. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, what you've been writing about Germany and now uh, Lindbergh, our America's favorite son. Uh, yes, uh, who just joined Hitler on an inspection of the Luftwaffe. As an aviator and now an emissary. Walter, sit down. Writing that his halo is slipping around his neck and becoming a noose. <laughs> yeah, well, that was going to happen to him and all of us Walter, if Hitler Walter, continued. Walter, you go ahead. You go ahead and you dig us some dirt on a chorus girl. Find out who's diddling who. And, I mean, print it for the rabble that makes both of us a lot of money. But you get your eye away from Europe. Get it back into the Broadway keyhole. Yes, and toward that end, I've gathered the perfect item for your column. A young Ohio lady whose specialty is uh, making a muscle in her chest wiggle. She learned it from her mother, and I think it's right up your alley. <laughs> Mr. Hurst, look, listen. Hitler is a man. A man with a vision for his nation. A man who is turning Germany into a productive and profitable concern. Walter, I agree that his views on Jews are a little extreme. Well, I think that's an understatement. But those are just scribblings in his book. I know. They're just words, Walter. Words cannot hurt anyone. So you stay away from politics. You stick to gossip. No. Excuse me, Walter. What did you say to me? No. I'm going to write about Hitler. And I'm not going to stop writing about Hitler until there's nothing left to write about Hitler. Because the last thing that I just wrote about Hitler is that Hitler's dead. And if you don't like it, you can release me from my contract. And I'll take my top column to the news, graphic, or any other nickel print press with butcher's paper and block type. But I don't think your accountants would consider that decision very productive or profitable. I want to take Hitler to a higher court, not a higher cotillion. The f what the, who the fuck did you write this, Herman? No, Diamond and I wrote it. Glorfield was sick. It's the best we can do. Well, your best is half as good as shit. Do you want to say something to me, Hank? Do you want to insult me? Huh? Go ahead and insult me. But you best make sure the insult is clever. Clever enough to use in my column, or you're fired. Come on, I'm waiting. I can always use a goodie. I want a Hitler column that's going to make the Fuhrer fume. Is that understood? And you have until morning. Crazed ego whose it is found in the idiot manner in which he stomps his feet until all around him fall into line. A man child who wraps his mouth around a microphone like a thumb. Just take out the Hitler comments. Why not pull him all together? Because he sells papers. Page 10. A self-appointed dictator who demands his followers adore him and then stands back on his platform waiting to be convinced. Take out all the political items. He cut the column in half! A self-effacing fascist who exacts loyalty from his subordinates during the day and then takes out the long knives at night. Pull him. I'm out of the mirror. I'm out of the mirror. And all my shit turnies say that I can't go to another paper because he owns my name. My name! Hearst can kill my column. Go ahead. I don't care. I don't need his paper. I'm gonna blow this whole thing wide open on the radio. Could you give us a smile, Mr. Wichel? <laughs> no, not right now. Not right now. Thank you. Maybe later. Maybe later. So what do you think? What do I think? <laughs> I think you're completely mad. What did you say? You heard me, Walter. And I'll say it again if you didn't. Little Herman Clerfeld from the Bronx is growing up. 
He's a big boy now. I'm, I'm big enough to know you don't broadcast political speeches on radio, Walter. Hell, they barely let FDR do his fireside chat, and the president doesn't even have a sponsor. To hell with the sponsor and the network. At least I'll get one broadcast out. Right, and then they'll pull you just like Hearst did, and you'll be out of a job. No, I'll never and be out of no, a no, job. No, 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 and more importantly, I'll be out of a job, oh, Walter. I mean, come on, come, come on, on, come on. Don't, Walter, Damn. please, Walter. I know that Hitler's a madman. He's a fascist firebug who thinks that every night is Halloween. But he's got a horde of followers who are trick-or-treating with him. Yeah. He's Hitler. You're only Walter Winchell. No, you're wrong. I'm Walter Winchell. He's only Hitler. Walter, I have a family. Walter, I have a wife and a child. Walter, you've received death threats. Oh, so what? I've been getting those for years. Yeah, from Ira Cuckold and Bad Temper Producers, not, not the underground German Legion, not the friends of the Rhineland. Herman, something has to be done You're about Hitler. What are we going to say about Hitler that hasn't already been written up? I've talked to a hundred doormen and cabbies in this town whose cousins and mothers and yeah. grandfathers have been taken away from their beds, the shops, their businesses and carried off into the night. It's gone. It's true. And you won't read about it under one of Hearst banners. And you won't read about it in an article about Lindbergh's latest luncheon in Birch's garden. And you won't see it in a newsreel at Chamberlain signing the Munich Pact because the cameras were all too busy filming the rows of gorgeous soldiers and not their boots goose stepping over the broken glass at Jewish shop windows. The Jews are being murdered. They're being murdered, Herman, now. There is no clever way that I can find to say that. Can you find a clever way to say it? No. Because if you can, I'll broadcast no. it. I think you said it extremely well, Walter. I can't miss this broadcast, sweetheart. I can't. If you just leave it alone, everything's gonna be okay. Oh, oh. 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 I'll get the candles. Herman! Herman! Come here! Can you hear that? Oh, for God's sake. Listen! It's Winchell. And the rest of you will be slain. Germany's last stand will not be on a battlefield. It'll be a cringing plea for mercy. And so I remain your correspondent, Walter Winchell, who believes that any American worries about being too hard on the Nazis should at first visit this torn land firsthand. And that anyone who thinks twice about taking Hitler to task should think once about the thousands he's already mutilated and murdered. We should all be thankful that in civilization's darkest hour, our country is the land that stands for freedom, tolerance, and the dignity of man. I've talked to a hundred doormen and cabbies in this town whose cousins, mothers, and grandmothers back in Germany are being dragged out of their beds, their businesses, and their shops, and carried off into the night. You won't see it in the newsreel of Chamberlain signing the Munich Pact, because the cameras are all too busy filming the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder rows of gorgeous soldiers, and not their boots goose-stepping over the broken glass of Jewish shop windows. You won't see it imprinted on Hitler's express ticket to Rome, where not only did the train pull in on time, on track 29, but Mussolini was there to give him a shine. Our country, which governs from the bottom up, must take to task the tyranny that destroys from the top down. This dictator will one day discover the memory of a people oppressed is always longer than the road to glory. And the voice of freedom will be ringing even after the curses of the barbarians are forgotten. Good night. And now, back to the big band sounds of Tommy Darcy. M Mr. Winslow, are you a socialist? A socialist? I mean, uh, a communist. Hitler hates communists, and you hate Hitler. And Hitler hates me. But I'm the only one of the three that loves America. And don't you forget it. Good morning, Mr. Winslow. Hey, good morning. Hitler hates me. He really hates me. Yeah. <laughs> Stalin's still not returning any of my phone calls, and I'm all in a tizzy. <laughs> this is Radio Berlin, broadcasting across the channel to England and the Isles. As was printed in America's own New York Mirror, Hitler declares Walter Winchell the new enemy to a new Germany. Our noble friends in the United States must fight this man.
Hey, wait. Let me... I have a little gift for you here, Mr. Winchell. to get to my kids. There was no need you coming by, Herman, really, you know. Oh, well, come mm -hmm. on, of course I was. Well, it was, it was... But I appreciate it. Of course, it's the same. Oh, sure, okay. sure, well, for sure, yeah. After all, if, they, if the right gets you, where's my next check coming from, huh? Hurst, I'd huh? be more than happy to let you write my epitaph. <laughs> <laughs> Not so funny, necessarily. <laughs> What's up, honey? Supper will be ready in 10 minutes. Wonderful. Oh, mm -hmm. great. Walda wants to go out tonight, but I've told her that since it's the first weekend that her father's been home in more than a month, you'd want her to stay. Yes, I would like her to stay. Okay. Thank you. Fine. What do you think, hon? They're not too much of an eyesore, are they, Mama? I mean... No, they're not, Walter, but you've put them on the laundry room window. You've secured a dozen boxes of soap powder. Mm-hmm. Supper in ten minutes. Okay. I'm not very hungry. How about you? Actually, I'm starving. But, uh, whatever you say, Walter. Your customers. You got such class. Every time I popped out of a cake, I wanted to say that, and now's my chance. <laughs> hey, what truck hit you? No, never mind that. Dallas, I want you to meet Herman Clerfeld, my associate. Hello, how are you? Herman Clerfeld? Now, Walt, here's someone in desperate need of a new name. I know, and we're in desperate need of a drink, Dom. Well, come on in. Right. Listen. I've been trying to call you for two days now. Where you been? I've been up in uh, Westchester, catching up on chores. Westchester? Mm -hmm. You mean Walter Winchell went home and played family dance? <laughs> <clears throat> All right, I'm on holiday. Give me a scotch and soda, please, huh? Yes, sir, and you? I'll the shank. Thank you. Great. Listen, I've been trying to call you with a tip-top tip. You see, I've met a fugitive by the name of Lepke. Lepke Bookhalter, oh, the chief of Murder Incorporated? Head of the mob's own assassin squad. Oh, Very good, Herman Clerfeld. <laughs> now, Walt, uh. I met him at a party I went to at No Neck, and he was real fascinated with me knowing Walt DeWinch. Well, it's a fascinating subject. Mm hmm Now, you know the New York <laughs> DA's got a death price on his head. Mm. Yeah, but the FBI wants him alive. Yeah, but he wants to turn himself in. Really? Mm hmm He wants to turn himself into you. What? Mm-hmm. Then you turn him over to the FBI. For some reason, he'll only trust Walter Winchell. I just made the front page, huh? I just made the goddamn front page. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. oh, let's drink and dance. Let's dance. Let's eat, actually. <laughs> oh, I'm hungry, Walter. <laughs> I don't think you should do this. Herman, what are you, crazy? The biggest scoop of my life is going to be walking down that alley in okay. two minutes. It was on the level, but maybe it wasn't Bogolto who called her. Maybe it was, uh, maybe it was the friends of the Fuhrer, okay? And you were going down there to meet Hitler's best buddy, a bullet. Careful, Herman. You'll have me thinking you might miss me. <laughs> no, 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 you know that that's not true. You're a pain in the tuchus, but I don't want to see you dead. Don't worry, Herman. I'm not going down that alley alone. Here they are. Here they are. Okay. I'm bringing a good friend. Oh, for God. What the fuck? What the hell is that? Is that a gun? Here we go. Here's what I want you to do. To as soon as I walk down that alley, you call Gabro, okay? And you tell him to block out two banners. One, Winchell captures Lepke. Walter, please. You could die down there. That's the second banner.
Winchell. Bacolta? What is that name in Yiddish? A name in Yiddish? Slepki. <laughs> Nobody asked me that since my bar mitzvah. <laughs> Shall we go meet Mr. Hoover? That's why I'm here. Okay. Mr. Hoover, this is Lepke Buckhalter. Have a seat, Mr. Buckhalter. Sure. Kevro said, huh? What'd he say? I bet he's blocking out the second page. No, Kevro, it's page. not going to give you the front page. page. You, oh, is that what he no, said? He's I'm not, not going to give you the front page? Neither will any other paper, all right? What, what, what Walter, Hitler has just invaded Danzig, and he is rolling onto the Poland. It's war. I've been outscooped by Hitler. Moving in or no. what? Castell and the big boys figured I'd pass Lepke to you. Seems they'd rather he was in some DA's freezer than shooting his mouth off to Hoover. Oh no, you're kidding me. Mm -mm. You got a light? Yeah. Are you in danger? No, they're gonna let me walk. As long as I walk out of town and keep walking. Dallas, I'm so sorry, hon. Mm. No need. It's actually gonna work out all right. I'm gonna become the actress I've always said I already was. I really mean it this time. There's this thing called living theater. You wouldn't believe where some of these plays take place. Dockyards and fish markets and crumb bum neighborhoods. I read one where this broad had a worse mouth than me. <laughs> Imagine that. I think your mouth is just fine. Thanks. And thanks for fishing me out of that bathtub way back when. Oh, come on. I'll be seeing you all. All right, well, you call me, all right? When you get to where you're going, if you need anything. I'll okay? Walt, my real name is Mary Louise. Goodbye, Mary Louise. Yesterday, December the 7th, 1941, a date that will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The United States was at peace with that nation and at the solicitation of Japan, was still in conversation with its government and its emperor, looking toward the maintenance of peace in the Pacific. Hey, hey, come on in. did you call me? Yeah, yeah, come on in. Japanese attack the store club? That's not funny. All right, wait. Listen, I want you to listen to this, okay? It's, uh, it's not quite finished, right? He's a little sprucing okay, up, right? right? The but column yeah. was submitted an hour no, ago. this is my will, okay? Ah. I, Walter Winchell, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if I should die in the heat of battle... Oh, Walter, come on. What? No. Oh, that's yeah. fine. I yeah, don't well, know. What the hell is all that money? Oh, wait. Come here. I want to show you something. Come here. <laughs> Guess how much? I don't know. Yes, come on. I have no idea, Walter. 
What? One million dollars, Herman. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> hey, I'm stationed in Brazil. I'm not leaving my lettuce in any bank. Not during so a world war. What? Help me with this, will you? I, I rented one of those vaults, you know, down on Wall Street in the catacombs. Well, you gotta get down there. You're just going to carry this down to Wall Street? No, I'm taking a cab. All right, come here. All right, Herman, look, you gotta do me a favor, all right? Yeah. Take this, and I want you to see what you can do with it, all right? Oh, for But I need it by sake. the morning, because I ship out tomorrow, okay. right? I, 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 I've been meaning to tell you something, too. Well, right. I joined the Army, and I report to Fort Dix in two days. Oh. <laughs> Are you going to write your mother while you're in the service? Yeah. Don't worry, I'll write her. Good. I only have time to write to mine, too. I'll call you at the base with goodies and gags from Brazil, OK? OK. asked you to resign your commission at my request. But why, Mr. President? Because I want you here, where you belong, doing what you do best and what's best for the country, writing your column and answering to no one. Now, will you do that for me? Of course, Mr. President. Good. Thank you. Thank you. And now, uh, Walter, I'm a, a bit pressed for time. I have to forgive me. Oh, I understand. Tell me, is it true what you wrote in your column? That White Christmas is the biggest selling record of all time? Yes, it is, sir. I love that song. It's a wonderful tune. Mm -hmm. Why is it that they write all the most beautiful tunes during wars? You'd think we could all learn to sing a better one in peace, wouldn't you? Good day, Walter. Good day, Mr. President. So I button down here, too? No, don't button that button. I told you. Like that. So I, leave saw, it open. I read a story uh, by this, uh, your friend, who? Damon Runyon. Oh, yeah. yeah. What a, a wonderful writer. What? Herman, what do you just bust in like that without knocking, huh? You're lucky the Army deferred your induction. They never would have put up with that at Fort Dix. Sorry, I'll come back later, OK? It's fine, it's fine. Come on, I got to look at my copy. Come on. Herman, will you do me a favor? Mm hmm Will you, um, see this gentleman out? Sure. Thank you, Walter. Yeah. Herman, you're back, Wayne. Yeah. Here we go, sir. My son is a good boy. My son is a good boy. Yeah. Your son is a good boy. What can I say at the passing of this man? What can a son say at the loss of his father? There need be no great monument for FDR ever. His monument is forever in the hearts of the common people. As a citizen, one must stand in awe before the accomplishments of this single great soul. One can also weep as a friend. Calls a citywide blackout, and he schedules my radio time slot to do it. Yeah, well, I guess he's nervous the Japanese are going to retaliate, take out Queens, and cost him his re-election. That could win it for him. <laughs> I don't care if they take out Truman. He's a crude, cussing son of a bitch anyway. Yeah, well, the Japanese don't think he's too polite either. Look, let me tell you something. I never had any problem with him dropping the atomic bomb. None at all. He should have done it a year ago. It's just that FDR would have done it like a gentleman. Oh, come on. What, what is the difference between FDR or Truman killing thousands of men, women, and children? There's no gentlemanly way of dropping an atom bomb, Walter. I'll tell you the difference. One man can say, OK, take that fucking A-bomb, get on the fucking plane, get your cock-sucking asses over to the motherfucking Pacific, and when you see that ass-licking nip island, you take your fucking finger, put it on the fucking button, and you drop your fucking load. And the other man can say, gentlemen, shall we? That's the difference between Roosevelt and Truman. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. Walter Winchell's room. Yeah, he's right here. It's a man. There's no gentlemanly way of dropping a bomb? Watch this. Mayor LaGuardia, Winchell here. Listen, I understand you've scheduled a citywide blackout for 9 tonight. 
which happens to be the same time slot as my radio show. Now, since federal regulations prohibit a blackout after 10 p.m., I strongly suggest that you reschedule it for 8. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, look, look, look. There's no sense in talking, because it just wastes your time and mine. Look, you got a little more than a minute before 8, and I strongly suggest that you call Water and Power right now while you're still mayor. My column showed you into office, and my column can show you out again. It's your decision. Now you got less than a minute. reporter was privileged to watch Josephine Baker perform at the Apollo Theater. And Apollo himself, Greek god of the sun, would have found himself howling at the moon if it had meant just one more encore from this legendary lady. Thank you. Champagne and caviar for everyone. <laughs> Pardon me. Mr. Winchell. Miss Baker. It is such a pleasure to finally meet you. It's a pleasure for me, my dear. I must thank you for that wonderful review. You know, you should come to Paris sometime and teach our critics how to write so poetically. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. I'm going to do that, I promise. I look forward to it. As do I. Enjoy your dinner. You too, my dear. Glad to see you, Miss Baker. So, when you hand him up against the ropes, let me just ask you, in the sixth, right? So, how's Winchell? He was very charming. Well, where's our champagne? What does a person have to do to be served in this place? Anyone, s'il vous plaît? What's going on? Said she waited a whole hour for her wine. No show from the waiter, no offer of an order, no help from Winchell. She's saying it's because she's colored. It's ridiculous. I got the best record on race relations of any reporter in the country. I mean, come on. Besides, I had my back to her. How was I supposed to know? You weren't. But they don't know that. And now neither does anybody else. So you tell them, Walter. No! I don't defend Herman. I attack. That's the first rule of this business, Herman, and you know that. The second you defend yourself, you're dead. Come on. Your business is being a journalist, and journalists use their columns to attack or defend, even for themselves. Not Walter Winchell. Not me. I'm going to the store club tonight and every night. I will not be run out of some gin joint like I'm Johnny Red because some vaudeville vamp didn't get a vino on time. Walter, it was we an attack. honest mistake. Somebody That's... else. Who we got in the pot? We got Truman. Word is he may relieve MacArthur of his command, even though MacArthur retook Seoul from the North Korea. And disobeyed a direct presidential order while he was doing it. And if that hayseed under a hat hadn't have stopped him, we would have crossed the 38th parallel and stuck it to the revs up there, uh, what do you call it? 90 degree perpendicular. <laughs> I like it. Sure, I it. Just slip in a couple of lines about how you feel badly that Baker was snubbed. Okay, you don't have to apologize. I can write I up the MacArthur item. Well, I can write it up. I'll, uh, gag about, uh, Truman replacing him with Chiang Kai-shek. I'll milk it out. I like it. It's yours, Hig.
I say what Walter Winchell did to Josephine Baker is an insult to the United States and the newspapermen who don't pursue the racket he pursues. I despise him as a very dangerous influence on American journalism and American communications. For God's sake, Walter, each day this thing gets harder to handle. Why are these sons of bitches after me? The NAACP publishes a letter praising my past efforts on civil rights. I read it on the air, and still, the Post paints a bullseye on my back. Why? Now they're calling me a plagiarist. No, they're not. They say we would call Walter Winchell a plagiarist, but we can't. Our legal department has informed us that he would have to write his own copy first before we could call him a plagiarist. I want the Post struck. And I want it struck today. By tomorrow? I want them bleeding from every violence. They're just playing gossip hardball, Walter. Let no. it pass. No! no. Herman, this is not gossip! This is me! This is my name! And nobody touches my name! Not ever! from the New York Post. We'd like to ask you a few questions about Walter Winchell. May we come in? Uh, sure. Yeah. Come on in. Yep. Uh, this is uh, Jeanette, my wife. Hi. Great. Uh, 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 how about something to drink? How about uh, some seltzer? Yeah, okay, that would be great. Thank great. You. OK. Uh, sit down. Make yourselves at home. Mm. So you're going to tell him you're his ghostwriter? <sighs> no, sweetheart, you don't understand, OK? According to Winchell, I am not his writer. I am his associate. I mean, come on, didn't you know? Winchell writes all those columns himself. You're angry if I say otherwise. Oh, OK, so what are you going to tell them? Ah, uh, here you are, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Clearfeld, you mm -hmm. are Walter Winchell's head ghostwriter, are you not? Well, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Uh, actually, I'm in shoes. Excuse me? I sell shoes. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with Mr. Winchell's column, and I enjoy it very much. Isn't that right, sweetheart? Yes, yes. But not as much as I enjoy selling shoes. <laughs> and, ooh, I'll tell you something. If I may, I have an Italian wingtip and stuff. Smile. switching papers. Why isn't this item ours? Which item? This item about Joseph McCarthy. Why isn't it ours? Are you it worried should about be the ours. New York just going to top you with articles about Joe McCarthy? I'm worried about everybody. Get to hey, you rip it, you buy it. What do you care about Joe McCarthy? What do you care about Joe McCarthy? The people care about Joe McCarthy, Herman. The people care about Joseph McCarthy. You believe that guy? I believe what the people believe. Um... May I have your autograph, Mr. Winchell? <laughs> there you go, Mrs. Thank America. Thank you. Thank you. Could you give us a smile, Mr. Winchell? And you as well, Mr. Cohen? And you, Senator McCarthy? What the hell are you doing here? 
Get your coat. We're going for a ride. Where are we gonna go, Walt? They can't just wait till morning? No. Come on, come on. All right, I'll get my coat. Yeah, this is good right here. Great. Yes, sir. Stop here. Wait here for me. This is where our candy store used to be. Right here. Oh, boy. Walter. Walter. I'm gonna get pneumonia and to hear Walter my face. See this, Herman? <laughs> See this right here? Yes. This is the spot where Mr. and Mrs. America almost lost their favorite newsboy. Mm hmm? Yeah, right here. A horse car. Almost killed him. You're kidding, no? Oh! But it didn't. Yeah. And those bastards aren't gonna kill me either. You hear me? They are not going to kill me. Okay, I hear you. Paul. They are yes. not going to kill me. No one is trying to kill you. Yes, they me. are. Yes, they are. All of them. Baker, the NAACP, the Post, its editor, Shh. Wexler, all of them. They are after me. And do you know why? Why? Huh? Walter, why? I mean, a stage manager. What? Why are you laughing? Isn't it funny? Okay. Come here. They all got little red blankets on their beds. Baker and all of them. And I'm gonna expose them. Why the fuck did Baker come to the store club that night? And why the fuck did she leave without talking to me? Why would she do that? And why is the Post spreading so much ink around trying to blacken me? Why? Why? Because it was all designed no. from the no. very no. beginning. No, there's no yes, design. Yes, all the while. No, there isn't. Then why okay. are they trying to kill me? Uh, Answer me that! Answer no, it! Answer it! Answer it! No one is trying yes, to kill are. you, Walter. They are just newspaper men, and they are hungry for an item. Okay? It's the same game that has been played out in the papers for years. It's the game that you started. Walter? That's all. They are after my life. No, they are after your column. Walter, Walter, your life is June, your children, and your friends. Okay, and I would like to count myself in that number. Walter, they're after the blessed event. But you know something? I don't think of you that way. I think of you as a blessed man. But you know, can't be the event and the man at the same time. Walter, you have got to choose. We all have got to choose. Now, I choose Winchell the man. Who do you choose? Strange man dragged me out in the rain in the middle of the night. We're laying out the column for the next six weeks, and it's filled with goodies and gab. And the top goodie is that Editor Wexler of the New York Post was a member of the Young Communist League. Higgs, you can oversee the series. I want you to draft out the item. No. What? No. I've had more than enough. No. Would you excuse us, boys? I don't want you in on this, Herman. I don't want you to miss this ship. Do you know how big this thing is gonna be? Huh? It's gonna be big. Big. Big enough for Winchell. <laughs> I sealed myself with some senators and special prosecutors in Washington. I'm gonna be feeding this committee information, Walter. tips, Walter. goodies, Walter. gab. Walter, you don't have to do this. I know what well, I'm no. doing. And I know that I don't have to write it. No. You write what I tell you to write! You say what I say! No. Walter, you mean you say what I say? 
everything that you have said, I said first. But nobody knows it. Oh, yeah, and you have taken my words, my thoughts, my hates, my hopes, and you've made them all your own. Nobody, not my, my friends, my family, nobody knows what I think or what I believe because I have given it all to Winchell, the voice of a nation. And I gave you a job, and don't you forget it. I gave you a job that took your kid up that ivory tower right to that college. You want to quit, Herman? You want to leave me? Go ahead. Go ahead. But who's going to hire the number one ghost for the number one devil, Walter Winchell? Mercury Dealer presents the nationally syndicated columnist of the New York Daily News, Ed Sullivan, and his ghost of the town, the America's okay. number one TV Why do we have to be here? Because we're all going to eat together as a family. Thank Will you, you. please? Because that's what we're going to be. Tonight a is going to be a really big We've show. We've always been a family, Walter. First, I would it's like nice to hear you say it anyway. The great relief pitcher for the fabulous New York Hello? Mr. Joe Page. Oh, yeah. Hi, Hank. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just got back from the coffee hearings. Yeah, hey, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, you know, I have it on. I have the TV on. Yeah, are you watching on one? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you, the only thing long-lasting about television is that people are going to kick out their screens and use them as radios. I know, it's true, I'm telling you. And Sullivan's just a dull boy to make it die a quick death. Yeah. I know. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, 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 I'll wear one on my wrist, one on the other wrist, one on my ankle, and one someplace else. <laughs> Excuse me, doll. Don't write that part down. <laughs> Look, I'm perfect for television, and television needs me. I, I was in vaudeville for 12 years. I don't know if you knew that. You're old enough to know that. <laughs> I'm a born visual performer. I did a guest bit on a variety show once, and the howls from the house almost blew off my hat. Look, the only reason that America is eating its supper in front of Sullivan is because it's hungry for something to stare at. And it'll settle for the Tin Man when it hasn't seen The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> but I am getting very, very weary of sitting here and acting as though we're playing some little game. And this committee, this committee, its activities may well determine whether this nation will live or die. We've got to clean out the, those who are responsible, Mr. Chairman. In conclusion, those who are responsible either knowingly or because they were simple guys covering up communists and traitors, not dead ones but liars. It's great seeing you again, Walt. Yeah. Gotta go, Del. Oh, listen, I just wanted to ask you something. You're gonna think this is funny, but a couple years ago, I was working in this little theater group up north. Yeah. And I met this guy, uh -huh. a director. Yeah. We had a thing for about a month, just a month. Oh, really? Anyway, yeah. One night he took me to this meeting and, oh, I didn't have any idea what it was going to be about, you know. Uh -huh. I can't even spell socialism or communism, much less agree with what they're about. And anyway, everyone spoke normal. I mean, nobody spoke Russian or looked like Stalin or nothing. But uh, I had a couple of drinks and then I signed this petition and I thought it was funny. See, the thing is, I got this part in a picture out in Hollywood and finally I'm getting a break. I mean, a real break. That's terrific. Terrific! No. I gotta go. The thing is, they're taking the part away from me. See, they already blackballed this director. Uh -huh. Now they're saying that I can't work anymore either, but Walt, you know people. Me? Mm -hmm. No, I don't know anybody. Oh, you no. know everyone. You know people <laughs> on that committee. You could talk to them. Talk to them about me. No, I don't. <clears throat> no. Well, I, it doesn't... 
Just as a favor, just as a favor, just as one favor for an old friend. No, I can't really do that. I can't really do that. No. It doesn't... Well, they're not gonna let me work. Not in theater or pictures or nothing. I can't do anything else. I've got nowhere else to go. Have breakfast, take a shower, do what you want to do, enjoy yourself. But I think you should be out by noon. Bye, Dells. Well, well... I'm glad to see you, Dells. Bye-bye. Well... for the first time on television, a first-hand look at the voice of a nation, Walter Winchell. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. Washington, Senator Joseph McCarthy's committee will subpoena an intimate friend of President Eisenhower's, John J. McCloy, the former High Commissioner of Germany. Attention, John and Jane, United States. The diplomatic situation with Russia is desperate. The only thing that will stop Stalin is the atomic bomb. Either take Hiroshima to Stalin, or take Stalin to Hiroshima. Mary Kay, the actor's wife, Richard Van Borghese. Why is he jumping around like that? Does he do that on the radio? Yes, of course he does, yes. He's like an idiot. Uh, hey, he's not an idiot. Well, I know. That idiot's been very good to us. Look at him. It's not funny, Jamie. Place the hole in the head. Let us not assassinate this lad further, Senator. Let's, 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 You've done enough. Have you no sense of decency, sir? At long last, have you left no sense of decency? Mr. McCarthy, I will not discuss this further with you. You have sat within six feet of me and could, ask, could have asked me about Fred Fisher. You have seen fit to bring it out. And if there is a God in heaven, it will do neither you nor your cause any good. I will not discuss it further. I will not ask Mr. Cohen any more witnesses. You, Mr. Chairman, may, if you will, call the next witness. Are there any questions to come from the uh, members of the chair? As you know, the Post has filed their suit against you for one and a half million dollars. They've authorized me to inform you that they're willing to accept a $30,000 court cost settlement. Provided you are for a public apology on the air prime time. Otherwise, they'll be happy to accept the one and a half million. Please, call me if you have any questions. Good day. Walter Wendell has authorized ABC to state that he never said nor meant to say over the air or in his newspaper column that the New York Post or Mr. James A. Wexler are communists or sympathetic to communism. If anything Mr. Wendell said was misconstrued, he regrets. There's not the enough good gab in it. Most of it I read the news yesterday. And now, is it Rewrite it, Mr. Or did you want another 200 papers to drop your column? Shot Mantle hit last night. Must have gone 500 feet. Well, I didn't see him hit it, but I bet he had a shot before he hit that shot. Now, you know that Mantle only drinks at night. Come on. Well, it was a night game. Ah. <laughs> Talk off for you, Mr. Oh, thank you. Wife. Wife. Hi, sweetheart. Is everything all right? A registered letter from Winchell. Well, Winchell sprang from more than a postage stamp? Just read it to me, sweetheart. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna be right home, all right? Okay, bye. Well, he just sent me a letter of recommendation. Mazel tov. Oh. I'm out of a job. But you've been like a son to him. Yep, and he has been like a son of a bitch to me. Well, I better go home and check my mail.
Mr. Winchell, how long did the mirror last? June 10th, 1929, till today. Boy, how's it feel now to have it all shot out from under you? Well, you don't feel happy or good about it. I'm thinking about an awful lot of people who grew up around here, from copy boys to executive positions to editors, who seem to have aged a lot in the last few hours. I don't know where they're going. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. American, all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. Dots and dashes and lots of flashes from border to border and coast to coast. And now, a few juicy tidbits from yours truly. Oh, what's this? And here's a nice little juicy tidbit for yours truly. just got the new screw. It's unbelievable. Hello, it's real. Hello, Mr. Clifford. Oh, well, hello, Mr. Mitchell. Good evening. <laughs> How are you? Good. Uh, you look good. Oh, man. bullshit. Thanks for coming down to meet me, Herman. Sorry. You see this bruised garbage that they're hawking oh, now? Oh, boy. That is definitely bruised fruit. Yeah, I right? think so, huh? <laughs> So, how are you, Herman? Where are you living now? Oh, Walter. Well, I go been going back and forth, you know, to uh, <clears throat> L L A, New York. Really? And I go to Miami, you know, play a little. You know. Mm -hmm. That's all. So why'd you call me, Walter? <laughs> well, I understand you're writing books now, huh? Biographies. I'm writing biographies. Oh, yeah? yeah. When are you gonna write mine? It's a little overdue, don't you think? Wow. I think maybe you should uh, write your own book about yourself. You know what they call an autobiography. That's what I mean. When are you going to write my old biography? Oh, Walter, uh, you already have all my best stuff, so... <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You told me that once before, Herman. You said you had nothing left because I had used it all. Wait, come here. I want to show you something. I got to find it. Yeah. Yeah. My respect for this man has remained constant. No American can contemplate him without a sense of solemnity and humility. Solemnity for the proud inheritor of a noble tradition. Humility in the thought that he was a servant to his responsibilities. Oh, that's very good. It's better than good. It's great. It may, in fact, be the finest thing that I have ever read. Oh, yeah? Who wrote it? You did that, Me? The day that Kennedy was killed. You wrote it for the column, but I turned you down when. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. No, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you turn it down? Because it was too good. It's true. It didn't sound like me. It sounded like Herman Clerfin. And you kept it. Yeah, I kept it. And when you left me... You know, when you fired me. When you left me, I thought that I might use it in a hundred different columns to describe a hundred different men. You know that? but it belongs to the man that it describes best. Yeah. Oh, you. <laughs> you got a tenner on you? What? A tenner, a saw buck, a oh, hammer. Oh, come on, hurry up. It's a lousy bet. OK. Yeah, well, it's a lousy bet because you always lose. Uh -huh. Give it to me. Come on. She looks good. From far. You just bet she looks far from good. I do. Good evening, Mrs. America. Good evening. Goodbye, Herman. Goodbye, Walter. <laughs> Walter Winchell is dead at the age of 74 in the University of California, Los Angeles Medical Center. Mr. Winchell is survived by only his daughter, Walda, his wife having passed away from heart disease and his son having taken his own life years before. Winchell was, during the 30s and 40s, one of the most widely listened to and prominent broadcasters in American journalism. 
It having been estimated that one out of every two households listened to him weekly. Walter Winchell, dead at the age of 74. Shochen Bamromim Hamtse Menucha Nechona Tachas Kanfe Hashchina Im Kedoshim Utehorim Kezohar Harakia Mazhirim Et Nishmas Baruch Ben Yahu I want to be in Winchell's column, honestly, baby, I do, so he can say that I'm that way, both swell against you. I want to be in Winchell's column, gosh, if he'd give us a line, I'd give lots of orchids to Mr. Cupid for making you mine. Then he could say, we'll middle-eye it.